A lot of people believe there's a level of inevitability to foot blisters. They've tried a lot of things and what they've tried either hasn't worked or doesn't work with any level of certainty. And when they hear blisters are caused by heat, moisture and friction, their thought process is, well, my feet are going to get hot when I exercise, I can't help that. So my feet are going to sweat, I can't help that either. Therefore, there's going to be lots of friction. And that's when they accept that blisters are going to happen and all they can do is tough it out and simply wait for their damaged skin to heal after the event. When it comes to friction, a closer look at that word is required. While friction is a fundamental factor to the cause of foot blisters, it's more counterintuitive than you might expect. Because friction has two different meanings. And this is where a misinterpretation occurs that makes us look in all the wrong places for preventive opportunities. In layman's terms, friction means rubbing, but the more scientific definition is it means the force that resists the movement of one surface over another. So on the one hand it means rubbing, and on the other hand it means the resistance to rubbing. Can you see they don't mean the same thing? In fact they're opposite. The problem is, it's the rubbing definition that most of us see in our mind's eye when we think of blisters. However, it's the second definition of friction that we should be thinking of, the resistance to rubbing. You don't need anything to rub across the skin for blisters to form. So we're approaching blisters from the wrong angle. But there is movement coming from somewhere. That movement is coming from the bone. The bone under the skin is moving back and forth with every step that we take. At the same time, and this is the important bit, the force of friction is keeping the skin surface stationary. That's right, the skin remains in stationary contact with the sock because of friction which is in stationary contact with the shoe because of friction, which is in stationary contact with the ground because of friction. The force of friction keeps everything external to the skin surface still or stationary while the bones move back and forth within the foot. Why do bones move? Because the foot approaches the ground at an angle and leaves the ground at an angle. Remember, the foot isn't a block of cement and it certainly doesn't function like one. The force of friction brings the skin surface to a halt while the bones skid forward relative to the stationary skin before themselves coming to a halt. This mismatch of movement is taken up by the soft tissues between skin and bone. When a bone moves, it pulls on the soft tissue layer it's attached to. That layer of cells is attached to another layer of cells and that to another and so on and so forth, all the way to the skin surface. The cells in every layer of soft tissue sandwiched between bone and skin are structurally connected to the ones above and below, and each of these connections have a bit of give in it. So when the bone moves but the skin surface doesn't, all the cells in these soft tissue layers slide across one another a little, resulting in the soft tissue stretching and distorting. Collectively, this give in the soft tissues is called shear distortion or shear deformation. Understandably, there's only so far or so often things can stretch before they break. That is to say, there's a finite amount of shear distortion that can occur before there is a mechanical fatigue of the connections that join the cells in these tissue layers. That mechanical fatigue is the initiation of the blister injury. The point of failure occurs in the stratum spinosum, or the prickle layer of the epidermis, just two or three cell layers up from the basal layer. The connections break one after the other depending on how large and how repetitive the shear distortions are. The initial sensation is what's officially known as a hot spot. As more and more connections fail as we continue to walk or run, the initial blister injury becomes larger and larger, but it doesn't look like a blister straight away. The injured area slowly fills with fluid over two hours, pushing the top few epidermal layers up like a bubble to form the actual blister. So blisters are a mechanical fatigue, a tear under the skin surface caused by the skin and bone moving out of sync and everything in between stretching and distorting. The larger the magnitude of shear distortion, the fewer the repetitions required to break these connections. This concept of skin and bone moving out of sync was mentioned by Doug Ritchie in that article he wrote back in 2010. In fact, we've known this since 1973, when Stanley Kamesh investigated the potential causes of friction blisters of the feet for the British military and published in The Lancet. The facts have just been lost in translation over the years as the message has filtered down. 
So I challenge you to stop relying on the heat moisture friction paradigm of blister causation and start thinking about the out of sync movement between skin and bone. Bone moves, skin stays still and everything in between stretches and distorts.